that losing streak. And of course, Millennium as the red team anchored on the bottom of the league right now and really desperately trying to find a win in week five. Notice how Kerb, he's starting with the flask as his first item because he knows he's going to be able, or he's going to get a lot of poke from Pekka. He doesn't really have the chance to poke back unless he wants to all in to the face of Pekka. So very smart of him getting the flask, making sure he can sustain himself and get the farm he needs. Well, we also see Yellow Star starting off with the uh, medallion rather than going for the Dawn's Blade, uh, Dawn's Shield, sorry, which has almost become a standard for supports these days. Yeah, so he has the Relic Shield. It means he's going to have wave control because he can decide to either push the wave by going in and popping the Execute on some minions. And also he's, you know, he has some good tank stats from it and he can upgrade it later on into, is it the Heart of the Mountain? Where, which specs is going to work against face. Fizz? A uh, face of the mountain, sorry. You got me there. But that's going to work against Fizz because Fizz want to all in someone. If you pop the shield on this target, you can kind of save them. We'll see how it works out. Of course, the fact that there is the crystalline flask up against that Doran's ring in the mid lane as well. Going to have a slight advantage for Peke, but we'll see whether Kirby just needs to sustain himself on that turret. We have to keep an eye on this the bottle though. I, I want to just, just draw your attention to what is happening here. Fnatic, knowing what Millennium do. If you think back to the Intel Extreme Master, Sao Paulo, they got caught out in a very similar situation. I think it was Seven Walls that maybe did it. I'm mm -hmm. not too sure whether Seven Walls or Pain that did the exact same thing and caught out for Millennium. Millennium didn't do it though, so for once they've been very passive in level 1. They actually didn't do it yesterday either. It seems they've gone a little bit away from this level 1 tactic because now teams have figured it out. And Fnatic was in a great position if Millennium had walked in with maybe the fresh first to light, try and land a hook and then just instantly burst them down and get the kill. Oh. We are moving into the lane phase. It is going to be standard starts out actually for both of these junglers. As I say that, it's only getting help on the red buff, getting leashed out there. Cyanate had no help, and we also saw Soaz. He snuck away the wolves as well, so he's going back to that top lane. He's already got to tell a light. He didn't take any experience, he didn't take him. Now, the reason Sana didn't get any help is because you need to be in your bottom lane at 155, otherwise, the other bot lane can just start shoving it out and forcing you to fall behind on XP. And once they hit the level 2 mark and you're still level 1, you just have to walk down to your turret and just wait for the minions because there's nothing else you can do. So what's Peke going to level up here against the Fizz? Is he going to go, like, maybe get the barrel out there? Is he going to go for the Drunken Rage? Is he, is he maybe want the stats to just help out that burst that Fizz could put out? He's going to do standard first up to level 4 where he has the body slam and then... Oh, level 3, sorry. I can see Yellow Star going very aggressive. Very deep stuff there and he's going to get hooked back in. That means Kraton will turn the damage back around again. Yellow Star taking some sort of unnecessary damage going a little too deep. Now, Peggy, he's obviously going to max his barrel roll just for more harass for the wave here. He could have opted to start for body slam if he really wanted to be aggressive with level 1, but he didn't really have to, so he's been going more the safe route. And he's just going to farm and shove Curb down all the time. We'll see how it goes at the moment. It is all as standard. Two CS being picked up by Yellow Star here. This is because obviously the uh, the shield that he has on there, making sure that the gold transfers. This is what you do with a relic shield. That's the thing, and we need to really keep an eye on his CS and not only look at the AD carries because he's going to actually pick up quite a lot through this laning phase and he's going to give some bonus CS and also again, look how it helps them control where the wave is in the lane. They're not going to get shoved down by this Lucian and Fresh. Yeah, it gives exactly the same, obviously, to your AD carry as well. So it's it's a big bonus in that lane phase, so we'll start stacking that gold. And you can see really what it means already. Just look at the gold. You can see there's 200 gold differential already stacking out here because he's actually used it on the season. Yeah, he's been getting the gold from this one. If we notice something else on the map, though, jungle-wise, we have Bingo. Oh, he's going in again. Oh, tries to go in, but quick play coming out from JV. Now throws out the death sentence. Reckless sidesteps it out there, not going to land on him. And once again, Fnatic has been able to get the early level 3 compared to the level 2 on Millennium because they could control the wave. Source, he's very far pushed off right here. Aaron is waiting in the wings, and Sanat, he's far, far away. Let's see if he can get in there. He has got the double buff on. He's going to rotate in towards Soaz. Has waited here. He's not going to land the Q, and Soaz dodging everything nicely. Yeah, very nice by Source. Kerb actually going aggressive on Peg in the mid lane. Going to try and turn it. Some urging strikes landing on Peke there. Getting a good poke back and forth, and Kerb coming out on top. And a lot of early game action here. Kerb is doing really well CS wise, actually keeping completely even. Obviously, the flask is going to help him sustain quite a lot. Cyanide, he's going to go for this wolf camp because he knows Aranea was top lane, so he's not nearby. And maybe he's actually going to wait afterwards with the ward and try and catch him out. He's going to try and start that off. You can see that Aranea is close by. Aranea actually coming into the wolves any moment now, but Cyanide's hit and run, taking that big wolf. And he's getting straight away from that one. Aranea is going to come in and find himself empty. And they spot out Arnia here, they ping him out, they know exactly where he was. Arnia also know that Sana was just at his wolf camp because he was moving back to his starting position. So both junglers, or both teams, know where the enemy jungler is. 
gives them that little bit of information. Looking at this top lane pairing, Kevin taken oh. very low. Oh, he's going to dive towards the tower. Has he got enough? Has he used the ignite? I think the ignite should do it on Kevin. Oh, One more tower. Sorry. No, hasn't quite got enough. But he still has to recall, so Source manages to get him away from the turret and let him lose this entire wave here. So he's going to be behind in CS, behind in XP. Kevin has his teleport, he can go back to the lane with that one, but that means he will be down and Fnatic will have the timer. Some counter-countering coming out from Aaron A. You can see he's taking the wolves in that bottom lane away from Cyanide. So, uh, sorry, the golems away from him, making sure he just counter-strike back on towards that gold. We'll see whether he sticks around, see whether he goes in towards that bottom lane. So as meanwhile in this top lane, Kevin has teleported in towards the top. So he's gone back, got himself that chain vest. But it's going to be a very hard gang for Aaron A in the bot lane because Reckless and Yellow Star have an idea he's there, so they already move back. They're not taking any chances with the hook from Jiri. Now they have a good wave coming in. They can actually decide to more or less freeze this wave and just wait for the rest of them to calm down. Meanwhile, Millennium starts the dragon. And it's going to be the dragon started off. We'll see whether they conclude. You can see that Yellow Star and Reckless are coming in there, and well, they are going to disrupt it nicely there. That's going to give Millennium food for thought, and they're going to back off. I actually like the move by Millennium because of how passive Fnatic was standing in the lanes and also Peggy was actually missing in the mid lane, so I think they thought he was recalled and that's why they went for it. And then you see Yellow Star once again using that Relic Shield, making sure he gets that extra gold, gives it across the Reckless at the same time. He's with 8 TS now, so that's going to continue as the game progresses. Yeah, it actually means that Reckless is quite far ahead, or not quite far, but he's at least ahead like CS wise due to the Relic Shield CS. Sanad Going towards the top lane, this time they can dive him, and Source has his ultimate. Yeah, so has also gone for that pickaxe as well, so he's going to try and be put more damage down. We do see just waiting in the wings. Here comes Peke as well. This is going to be a three-man pile on on top. Millennium in all sorts of trouble. Kevin's not going to be able to face this one out. He's going to tank it as long as he can. So as he's going to back away. Explosive cast keeps him pinned where he stands. Belly Slam comes in there. They're trying to Aaron trade once again. Have they got enough? Aaron Air comes in. He comes in. Locks on there. First blood did get a Soas, but a good counter from Aaron Air. They haven't got the follow-up support though because Kerb didn't come. No, but. Kevin managed to stay alive for such a long time due to his ultimate and due to the fact his pillar was blocking them from actually moving in there. Sanat had to repel, did no damage with it because he's up in the air to reset the tower acro or he would also, or he would have died earlier. It meant that Aaron could move up there and actually get a revenge kill and trade one for one. I'm interested in how that one worked out. As you know, as a team, I'd like to see my mid lane, especially if Peke goes up there, I'd like to see my mid lane of following because that was a full on pylon. He has got a good bit of damage on towards his middle turret. They can see half the hit points already taken off it. Now, Kerb didn't have vision on Peke when he moved out. There was no ward, so he, he might not have seen him actually. What he did, he didn't know where he was, so he didn't want to go out there. Oh, who's coming on Yellowstar? Hook on towards Yellowstar. He's going to get followed through. Kreaton trying to put some of that damage down. Quickly puts that shield on him, and that will cover off the damage. This time Kerb is roaming, he's heading south, he's just going to ward out that dragon. Smart enough though, making sure that if there should be a pink ward outside of this river area here, it won't spot this, pink, uh, this green ward because it's around the corner, so it's actually a very smart ward to make sure Fnatic is not trying anything. Jamie trying to zone out Fnatic here down this bottom lane. You can see him winding up that hook. He's ready and waiting to throw out that death sentence. If he can land it on towards Reckless at any time soon. He's just going to lash it on towards Yellowstar. We're going to bully him back out there. Yellowstar himself, you can see that glowing orb going around in that Relic Shield. Ready and waiting to try and hit one of those minions. And he's going to just save it, I feel, once again for that uh, siege minion. That's what he seems to be keeping it for at the moment. But it's actually a funny state we're in, bot lane wise. None of them really feel like they have the damage to all in each other. So they're just more or less farming away, trying to poke a little bit. Obviously, Yellowstar has to all in to do any damage, but he's also very tanky if he should be caught by Jiri. So none of them really feel confident in fighting, and they're just happily farming away. So Peke takes the blue buff, and you can see the blue buff already also spawned over for Millennium. I expect to see Kerp heading this way in a moment. Explosive cask is available. Peke isn't going to try and come and intercept it. Instead, he's just going to let Kerp hop, skip, and jump over there. Playful trickster on towards the blue No problem there. So, everything all smooth sailing. Let's look at this top lane because Kevin's been back. He's gone for that little bit of armor. He's got those two Doran's items and the chain vest. But so, as a game, going towards that Tiamat, it's almost becoming a standard for the Renekton's. And the Tiamat gives him. Oh, fish from Kerb. Almost hitting his face. He managed to body slam out. But Tiamat going into the Hydra is a very normal build now because it gives you a lot of split pushing potential. Also, gives you very good damage you can do onto Kevin here. The chain vest is going to help him a lot, though. Now we see Aaron here walking down to bot lane. He's coming down, trying to set this one up. It's going to be the fly. Oh, Reckless flashed out of it. So, Yellowstar is going to be the next focus. Oh, nice. Uses Aranea nicely. Beautiful work there. Zenith Blade onto Aranea just gets him out of the danger. Yeah, such a smart play, and it meant that he got kicked into his own turret and therefore was pretty safe. He had to flash the hook though, he didn't feel confident enough that he could dodge it. Meanwhile, though, Millennium is starting the dragon. 
Yeah, I think they just caught a glimpse of Cyanide in the top lane as well. So Kevin's going to keep them busy while the rest of Millennium do take this dragon. This will be the first one for Millennium. Successful dragon attempt. Took them two goes. They got her in the end. And Fnatic, they want to get his top turret and just trade, you know, turret for dragon. And also, Peko was pushing the mid turret. I'm not sure he actually got too much damage on it, but at least he got some pressure on it. And just to show you exactly why so as didn't last hit that turret, it wants to just make sure all of those minions get taken down. Kevin has no minions to pick up there, just making sure the tower takes down any minion, taking away every little gold advantage. Exactly, I mean, and also at the same time, he wants to make sure the lane is not pushing too much in favor of Millennium, so he has to overextend himself too much, because Aaron here, now there's no dragon, he can safely go top lane, because he's not going to lose anything anywhere else on the map, so he can just keep walking top now and try and gank source. That's exactly what he's doing, but the ward from Soaz is going to catch him out there. We do see Kevin's going to land. The kick did actually come in towards it. Aaron A is going to lock in towards him. Has to pop that Dominus. He has got the Tiamat. Can he focus on towards him? Aaron A are taking very low. Does still not want to follow that one on his own. And so as we'll walk off. And very nice by Source that he's actually focusing his damage onto Aaron here, who's a lot more squishy than Kevin. Oh, scumbag picker. <laughs> Making sure he didn't go for it. Didn't go all in there. Didn't use his explosive cast. Didn't try and blow everything on towards him instead. Just used that brand. Said, no, I'm not really going to let you off there. But I'm not too sure Kerp actually wanted to go back. He's got the blue buff. He was fully stacked on health. I think it was a more of a bait of his own. Yeah, definitely. He does have quite a lot of gold though, so he could go back. He want to complete his early Lich Bane, which gives him a lot of burst potential. It gives him a lot of early game damage. So, getting the Lich Bane from him. Oh, going on Kraton. Kraton has been focused here. This time he could get locked up nicely by Yellow Star. That's going to be the solo flare. Kraton just dodges straight out of it. Cyanide's coming back down. It's going to get spotted out by that ward. And we see Millennium backing off quickly. Again, nice. Engage actually from Yellowstar here, getting a lot of pogo onto Kraton. He still has his barrier, so he's not afraid of dying yet. But Cyanide is coming in. Cyanide comes around the side there. Yellowstar uses the Zenith Blade on towards Jerry. Have they got enough? Soaz came straight down there as well. That's going to be one. Can they make more of this one? Soaz on towards Jerry. They're going to try and turn it back around. Kevin's teleporting down here now. We also have Kerb joining the party as well. Yellowstar going to get locked up. I don't think he's going to be able to survive this one. Who will pick up the kill? That's the question. They want to give it across to Kraton. He will take it down eventually once he gets in towards that bush. There he is. Now we see Kerb. He's going down there everybody else from Fnatic backing off a one for one trade so once again they trade one for one everyone was in this one Kerb was running there we also had Pega trying to run down none of them was actually close enough but they were nearby for if something else should have happened so wisely enough both teams to try to back off Fnatic they got the kill they needed but they were too fine they couldn't actually back out and now Kerb harassing Pega a little bit quick bit of a urgent strike on towards Pega making sure he just gets his attention and then back to why he chugs on that potion to make sure he gets some of that mana back. Peke himself, well, he feels he needs to take those wastes away from Cyanide, who I don't think was too happy about that. Make sure he sticks around. Nah, this is, this is my goal. I am the jungler, after all. Peke is just going to take a little bit more. This time oh. around, Kerb is going to go all in. Cyanide is there to join the party as well. Peke is not going to go down. Instead, it's going to be Kerb. Tries to play for Trickster, but the Ignite takes him down on the pole. Very nice bait actually by Peggy. He goes straight in there, gives Kerb the opportunity to put down his ultimate on him because he knew Cyanide was there and he instantly shot him back and Cyanide joined in and they managed to pick up the kill. And Source, he's still in the bot lane. Goes aggressive on towards Jerry, flashes out of the solo flare there. Did get stunned and locked up briefly by Soaz, but they are just going to be able to back off from this one. This will be the tower for Fnatic. They can like, at least go for this one because Millennium have to back off. Nobody is moving down because Kerb is dead. Trundle is in the top lane, and obviously Aranir can't do anything to defend this turret. So very nice play. So it's actually been staying around this bot lane for quite a while. So let's have a look at how the game stands currently. It's a 3,000 gold advantage, or almost 2,000 gold advantage by Fnatic. And you can see in terms of towers, of course, they have those two towers. So Money in the Bank still technically for Millennium. They did take that dragon down. You can see at the moment with Peke starting to roam. This is, this, is going, this is what we've mentioned many times for Alex and for Kurt. Going back to Assassins, it's what these mid laners do best in Europe. Yeah, and generally, something where you can have more impact than just sitting in your lane farming is what we want to see from the European mid laners, and it's also why all the well, the strongest ones, at least, are playing that kind of style. And we see also when Alex is playing for Gambit and he has this impact, Gambit always wins. It is going to be the mid lane that may well go down. They can't quite get the last few hits on it. We do see in the top lane there. So it's getting locked up here. Hasn't got Dominus available either. He has got an Ignite and a Flash, but I don't think he's going to be able to get away. We do see Millennium. They're going to have to follow oh. him through here. RNA is going to come through. This will be Kevin coming in there. And RNA closes out the kill. And once again, because the Dragon is not up, RNA is in this top lane area. And as soon as he spots 
saw us out. He wants to go for the kill, and now they're going for this blue buff. Well, sorry, Nido, we're not going to land the kick on him. It will be a full invade. Peke is going to have that barrel that's still in there. It hasn't exploded it yet, so he's waiting to see if he can try and steal this one away. Explosive cast also available. Did he get it? No, he didn't. Aaron Air closes it out with the smite. And very nice, aggressive play by Millennium. They get the one kill, and then they just keep going from there. They don't stop, they don't back off, they know the blue buff was spawned, and they didn't walk down and just take it away from Fnatic. Yeah, more importantly, Kerp, of course, picking up his own blue buff as well, so making sure they don't trade that one away. Reckless in danger here. Yellow Star's backing off in the bush. Oh, he stopped he it. Cancels it away there. Doesn't follow through instead. Reckless, he should be safe with his support alongside him, but Kerp really fancies this. But it's very hard for Leona to actually lock down Fizz due to the fact he can jump around. So it can be very hard for him to land the ultimate unless he can walk in, get the Q stun onto Kerp, and they can, you know, more or less kill him from that. Ooh, he's going to see if they follow through instead. He's happy to just take, take the wave. Playful tricks are an urgent strike across them. And now we are back to. Square one. Dragon spawning in 20 seconds time. Will we see our first 5v5? And look at the vision control Fnatic just put up here. The two wards means that if Millennium is engaging from this area, they have full vision on them, they can land a long range engage from Yellow Star and then follow it up with the Gragas spell and start the fight that way. So it's very nice vision they have and if they can deny some vision from Millennium now, they can actually be in a very very good position for this fight. Fnatic is going to be the five that try and get in position for this one. Millennium are closing that gap, closing that net all around them. Barrel landing on towards J. Reed. Looks like Fnatic may start this one off. Pink Ward put in the right place to find out that ward in that corner there. It is going to be Millennium looking to try and close in the gallery. Ace in the hole is going to get used, but Playful Trickster dodges it straight out. And just due to the ward they have up here, they have full vision off curve. They can see when he actually wants to go in and try and throw his fish. So they know exactly when Millennium wants to engage. Look at Sarah's trying to zone him out. Peke trying to get that belly slam. Down on towards him, Cocoon doesn't find his target either. This time a barrel does land nicely there. The dragon down to half health. They're going to keep on pushing this one. There's a Piltover coming across there. Solar Flare is going to get used. Kerb does manage to use that flash. Seconds goes straight out towards Reckless. Reckless is zoned out of this one. Kerb in all sorts of trouble. He gets focused down. But it is going to be Aaron A that picks up the kill on Soas and takes the dragon. Millennium in running now. They're trying to escape from this one. Reckless gets one kill. Krayton going to be the next focus. Barrel will land. Can they get the damage down? The Cocoon will be up in just a moment's time. It is going to be the Zenith Flash blade on towards Kerb. Kevin, but the turret is doing damage on Kevin. They peke, sorry, and they do get away from this one. It's a two for one trade, but Millennium got the dragon. Millennium got the dragon, so it's actually worth it for them. If we look at the fight itself, though, Kirby came in from the side, had full vision on him when he threw in the fish. So Peke, he just backed out instantly and helped Reckless kill him. And meanwhile, yes, they did have swords going down, but they managed to pick up a revenge kill onto Millennium. And all in all, Team fight wise, in favor of Fnatic, but due to the dragon, Millennium actually comes out on top. And I would also argue the fact that those kills went onto RNA. This is, this is, while you can always argue it's great getting kills on your jungler, I would much rather have them on, say, the 0 2 0 curb on Fizz, or maybe the AD carry of Creator. On general, just spread out on your entire team, like we see in Fnatic, every single one has picked up a kill. It gives them quite a good, you know, a power spike. And as you mentioned yourself, Lee Sin, he's not scaling. Damage-wise, too well into the late game. He brings a lot of utility, he can be a great tank, but damage-wise, he's not going to bring anything. So him getting these kills is just going to make him a lot more tanky, but that's about it for now. Millennium needs to start getting some of these turrets down. You see that again. They're just kind of in that situation of the game where Millennium coming out of lane phase, they just don't transition very well, and Fnatic have a clear goal. They know what they want to go for. Well, yeah, Fnatic know what they want to go for. Obviously, it was the Dragon before, but I have to give some credit to Millennium. They've been playing this laning phase and transition into mid game fairly well. They've punished Source every time he overextended in the top lane and also took down a blue buff for it. And all in all, they're actually keeping up fairly well with Fnatic. Well, Peke doesn't seem too worried about Kerp. Kerp's the one that's backing away from this fight, doesn't really want to part of that. And of course, you can see the Athenes has been completed. Rapidon's death cap on its way for Peke. Meanwhile, Kerp went for that early lead plane. As oh, you the mentioned, hook. hook on towards Reckless. This could be something they follow through on, but instead, choose wisely to back away because Yellowstone and Cyanide are standing in the wings. And now, Reckless, he keeps his uh, small CS lead due to the Relic Shield on. Uh, on Yellow Star, but all in all, though, the bottom has been very, very passive. We haven't seen too much action before actually the rest of the teams decided to come down and, and fight for it and took the turret in Fnatic's favor. But so far, both AD Carries have been farming fairly well, and you know, they want to go into this mid game being equally strong. Rene using that smite, making sure he takes away that rate from Soa. So as himself has got that Tiamat completed. He's going to maybe head towards the Hydra instead, takes a little bit of damage, and that's the third outer turret of the game now. Fnatic successfully taking over objective, and immediately see Soas saying, 
I'm going to run straight top. Don't want Kevin taking that turret. And Aaron AX is following him. He just safeguarded to this ward. He want to try and stop Source from going there so Kevin can take down the turret. And once again, they can trade turret for turret. Aaron AX successfully dodging out the way of the stun. This time around, they are going to try and focus on him. So as he's not going to land that Solar Flare flashed out of by Jerry in the mid lane. XPK was ready and waiting to follow through. This could be the first turret for Millennium here. And Aaron AX actually using his ultimate kick there to keep Soaz away from it. They will finish this one off. Aaron here, he did every single thing he could to stop Soas from coming up there in time, and yet he managed to delay him so much that Kevin could take the turret down, and it was a very nice move. Also, I like actually the rotation for Fnatic in, in the first place. They spotted Kevin top lane, and also the new fist was spot, so they just instantly moved four people in there and took the turret. And, oh, Peg almost all the way to blue. Yeah, didn't get it, and he's been without that blue for a while. Kerb, of course, did take away the last one. Kraton does take away that second turret. And this is what I was talking about for Millennium. Gold in the bank. Those outer turrets starting to crumble. And you can see it's now just a thousand gold between them. That is just that bottom outer turret. And it will be all square this match. Yeah, and again, credit to Millennium. They keep taking the small things Fnatic actually want to give them. This time, mid turret was left undefended. It was already low from before. So two people simply went in and picked it up for free. And meanwhile, we see Kirk, he just keeps trying to farm. He's a bit behind Xpecker, but he wants to do everything he can now to just constantly farm for the next 10, 15 minutes and get really, really strong. Sunfire Kirk is picked up by both the top lane. There's no surprises there. And we'll see how the transition into the game. Kevin, well, we saw him yesterday on Shen. He was actually picking up kills as well with that Stan United coming in late and closing out the kills. But as it stands, he's just got those four assists, exactly what you want for that top laner. Just keep him, keep that gold ticking for him. Keep him well fed. Well, so as himself on the tank, which we haven't seen for a while. To be fair, one, two, two. Well, he is building, you know, somewhat offensive because again, he want to be a presence in this split pushing. He want to be able to duel Kevin for as long as possible. Once again, we hit the the late game mark. Then Trundle will be out dueling the next time, but building this. Hydra he's gonna complete next time he goes back is actually gonna give him or extend the time he can duel Trundle for a long time and it's gonna give him a lot of you know both damage in team fights but also just generally just split pushing presence. Well speaking of split pushing presence of course Kevin has the teleport so it's something that he's almost certainly gonna be looking to do you can see second item build water cut is going in there gonna go for that blade of the rune king so he's gonna be trying to do just exactly the same thing so as of course with the flash connected uh, flash ignite kind of a standard for Renekton's. And that's the thing that's in favor of Millennium because notice how Saurus instantly after he went back or oh, instantly after he pushed the wave out he's now been going down to Dragon because it's gonna be spawning here the next 30 seconds he's forced to do this because he doesn't have to teleport. Kevin on the other hand he can just continue farming away because he has the chance to teleport down. Solar Flare coming in but quickly safeguarded out by Aaron Air. That ultimate is not available in the next 30 seconds so why don't we keep our eye on how this is gonna work out. Millennium know that that's just been used they're going to want to force the fight on Dragon. And yeah, they really want to force this one because they've actually spotted through the wards that Source has been moving towards now his own top lane. He did decide to turn back again. They have full vision in this mid area so they can see everything Fnatic's moving around. And they want to set up the fight and this time they got the vision control. Kevin as well. He's taking away the blue while this happens so he's making sure they take every objective away from Fnatic. Dragon down to half hit points. They're actually instead going to turn. They're going to try and push for that inner turret. Millennium are ready and waiting to cut them off here. Fnatic going to try and keep them away. Have they got the damage? Teleport coming in from Kevin. He's just just taking the blue buff, he's happy to come in and play defensive. Has Reckless got enough? He's going to stick around. Is it going to be too long? That's the question. They're going to try and focus in towards him. You can see RNA, it gets locked up. He really wanted to get the kick on towards Reckless. Instead, Soas turns him through. Fnatic just melting down throughout the Millennium team. We do see Kurt picking up a kill on towards Peke. Can they turn this one on his head? Is Reckless doing all the damage? Kevin's found him. He's going on towards it. Kurt finds on towards him. The barriers, is it going to be enough? No, it's not. He goes down. And now the AD carries. They've seen support versus support. Top laner versus top laner. How is this one going to play out? Kevin chomping his way through the hit points of Soaz there. Lantern being thrown out for extra shield from Jamie. He's going to have his reset back up there. Comes in, flays both members of Fnatic. He's do see Kevin. He's going to flash for this one. Gets on towards Soaz. The pillar of ice comes down. Chops his way through Soaz's hit points and closes him down. A four for three exchange. Crazy fight between two teams. Yeah, such a messy fight. It actually starts out by Iron Arenir jumping into the back down of Fnatic. He wanted to kick Reckless back. It didn't work for him. He instantly died for it. But meanwhile, Kevin was just being such a bully. And notice the fight here. Notice Arenir up here at the top. He goes in for Reckless. He's not able to get him due to a stun from Yellow Star. But this means that Fnatic is putting three people on killing Arenir. So there's actually a 4v2 scenario down here for Millennium side. And they managed to get the kill on Pekka due to a nice ultimate from Curve. And then they, you know, turn into this 3v3 scenario here. And here we see why Trundle is so, so strong. He's going to be able to pretty much stay alive here. 
spam away his damage and due to curve flashing queuing into regulars to get the kill they need and from here on there's really nothing they can do in this 2v2 scenario for Fnatic side because Trundle is so strong with his single target damage. He's just biting his way through and finally closes out that fight with force with them. Chompers now wrecked. Oh, he's been caught out. RNA is on him. And you can see Kevin's going to be joining the party as well. Kerp is just below. You've got nowhere to go here, Correctless. He just gets followed through by that kick. He may well be able to solo out RNA here. RNA is having to use that safeguard. They're just going to chase him through. The rest of Fnatic are coming, closing in the gap. Ace in the hole comes through. Kerp gets in there just in time. Reckless still not gone down. The rest of Fnatic closing the gap here. Creates an all on his own in that top lane. He's going to try, to try and die to the tower. Have they got enough time to catch up towards him? Or will the tower take him down? He's going to go all the way to the Nexus turrets, I feel. He's going to go oh, down! Turret wow. kill! Nicely played by Reckless. Well played by Reckless. He managed to kite it all the way out and then he dies to the turret. I think it, I believe it's 8 seconds. You have to not take any damage from anyone. Or is it 10 seconds mm. to not take damage from anyone? And you actually give the kill to the turret instead. And now Saw has been aggressive. So as going on towards Kerb. Oh, the ultimate comes out from Jeremy. Not going to land. The death sentence does so. That's going to lock up So as He has to use that dominance. He's going to try and get out of it. The rest of Fnatic come in. The explosion. Cask nearly drops Kurt where he stands. We do see Kevin now. He's joined the party. We saw what he could do in the last fight. They're close on towards Yellowstar once again. Aranea has got that kick available if he can land a down in towards him. But he hasn't got anything to try and jump on them. And he is going to try and come around. He wants to go towards the Cyanide. He can't get either side of them right now. He's desperately trying to chase this one through. And Millennium finally give up the pursuit. A very risky play by Source here. He stayed up even though Regal was already dead. He actually stayed all the way up towards the turret from Millennium and they managed to catch him out and therefore just chase him 5v4. Very nice chase by Millennium, but also very nice escape by Fnatic. Back and forth action in this game. Still eight kills to eight and Fnatic still with the lead in terms of turrets, but you can see now they are falling behind in gold and that's a worry inside because Millennium, of course, got another 2,000 gold to pick up when they do take some of those turrets down. The question is, can they do that? And this is a different Millennium than we're used to. Normally, they win the early game and once they get to the team fights, things kind of fall apart for them. This time around, though, they were a little bit behind early game and now they actually managed to go even in gold. They picked up the last dragon. They got a very good team fight as well where they traded four for free. So all in all, they're actually doing really, really well. And I should point out, while well, all that massive reckless chase, the Fnatic coming to help them out, Kraton was just at the top. He's back up there again. He's just continuing to farm. He's doing what an AD carry should be doing, getting himself very fed. Once he joins the team fights, that could be trouble for Fnatic. That's the thing. Fnatic needs to be able to get to him backline wise. They re re really only have to repel from Elise and also Renekton and double dashing in. That is not enough because if you use your repel offensive as Elise, you're very you know, open to just getting bursted down once you actually jump in. They're trying to collapse onto Kerb here. They're going to come around the side from there. Nudir is in the bush. Yellowstar's not going to chase that one through. And the rest of Millennium do close out. And that's going to be a five-man Fnatic pushing onto a four-man Millennium on this tower right now. Kraton has backed off there. Kerb doing what he can, throwing down that pillar of ice, keeping them at bay. And Fnatic is doing what the combo is good at, sieging turrets, poking away with Gragas, poking away with Caitlyn, and then just going for the turret whenever you have gotten someone from Millennium low, and they can engage on you. Kraton finally came in there, but again, like you mentioned, they just had that siege potential. Immediately, everybody backs away from this fight. And Millennium are wondering where Fnatic are going to go next. They haven't got good wall coverage in their own jungle. No, they have all their wards are actually placed further down the map, so they don't really see Fnatic moving around here. The next one for Fnatic could be the top turret. It's the only outer turret left. Otherwise, they have to move all the way up to the base from Millennium, and that's where it kind of gets scary because it's very easy to flank around you, especially with something like a fist. Okay, he's off on his own right now down that bottom lane. Dragon is up in 30 seconds, so I expect that will be the next focus target priority for both of these teams. And Fnatic just warding out, giving coverage to the Baron, because there is always a danger that you can have a one goes for Dragon, one goes for Baron, and you get caught out either way. And as it stands, it seems Millennium, when well, they had that full ward position down the river, that's going to give them the advantage on Dragon. And notice the pings from Fnatic there, spamming on this Baron, because they want to make sure that if Millennium moves down to Dragon, they instantly go over there, already placed the pink ward, so they know it's not warded. Well, let's see if they can get any picks on Fnatic. They have that ward in the middle lane, keeping the objective covered off. This will be a very quick Dragon, you've got to remember. So Fnatic, if they're going to do something here, they have to get involved early on. Jerry flashing out there, is going to throw in, it's going to be picked up by Millennium. Now you can see the culling going down. Yellowstar's going to get focused on Reckless in the back, just gets melted by Kerb. That's 
that's a big problem. But Kerb's going to go down as well. He can't trip, tri play for Trickster away from this one. Becky is going to be the next line of focus. Creator, I'm going to chase on Jordan, but he belly dashes away there. Millennium a little bit split. They're not too sure, sure which one targets have chose for. Savage trying to wrangle them into the corner. Cocoon will land on Jerry. The hook's not going to go through, and both teams will back away. Both carries down. But these team fights, they are so even. It's always one for one, two for two. This time around, though, Kerb, he managed to land his fish all the way to the back line and hit it onto Reckless and instantly bursted him down. Yes, he died for it because he already used his Trickster and his Sonyas, but Millennium picked up the Dragon for it, so once again, they actually get out ahead. They managed to keep the objectives in their favor. Blue buff actually is something that Peke hasn't had for a very long time. He's very interested in trying to get the next one, of course. Kevin stole it away previously. Creator once again in that top lane, keeping that CS going, starting to build up a bit of an advantage over Reckless. And now, actually, if you notice the items here, Face of the Mountain is completed on Leona. It means that she can provide the shield onto whoever Face is jumping. This time around, though, if Reckless get hit by the ultimate in Face, he's more or less going to die every single time because he's so squishy. And you can see that's why he's gone for that red buff as well, wants to make sure he gets that extra bonus heal. So two heals going to be hitting him at the same time. Make sure he can save himself from that curve because we already saw how quick he can go down. Yeah, exactly. And there's three option he, options he has defensive-wise. He can go for Banshees to try and block some damage. He can go for QSS. If he uses it when the fish is on him, the fish actually just stays on the ground and he can move out of it and avoid the damage. Or he can go for the Garden Angel simply to revive up again if he should get bursted down. You know, Kerb, of course, with that Zonya's Hourglass. And Peke went the opposite direction, went straight for that damage. We'll see what he builds into next, whether it will be an Abyssal Scepter. I'm wondering whether he's going to go that route since he opts up against a high burst potential of Kerb, because he almost certainly will be the focus. It'll be either Peke or Reckless they want to take down as quick as possible. Let's have a look at these top laners, because obviously Blade the Rune King's been completed a while by Greg Kevin. Both uh, Spirit Passage also being completed. We do see so as he has gone bruiserish. He did get the Hydra. Oh, tal Talisman was used there, trying to catch on towards him. Not going to focus any target though. It's a nice counter engage from Sana, just landing the stun as soon as the Talisman was popped. Stopped everything from happening. If Kevin could have gotten closer, he could put up the pillar. But notice Fnatic now. They're going for this top turret. They're rushing straight in towards it. And immediately yeah, everybody from Millennium quickly recalling because this is going to be an exposed inhibitor. It's going to be so as and Peke both on there. Only just recalling now. They're going to get a good chunk of damage on this. Now we see Reckless. He's beaten it down as well. Peke going to use that explosive cash and keep them away. They've taken the inhibitor turret. Great positional advantage. Aaron A tries to go in. He only manages to land the kick on the cyanide there. Quickly blowing backwards. Kerb's going to get focused. Reckless just doing damage on the side there. Doesn't manage to take him. Sonia's hourglass was enough to keep him at bay. Soaz gets taken down. Sinai gets taken down. Now Kevin again in amongst the team doing damage. All oh, the barrel rolls back there. Creator making sure he doesn't run into a pillar of ice. Going to lock up Yellowstar. He's going to get caught out there. Try to turn it back around on towards Peke. The hook on Reckless. They're going to follow through. The flake of through. Brilliant dunk. Creator off the side. He's just taking them down Whoa. one by one. A triple kill comes through Creator. But what a setup from Jay. So once again, Aaron here in the start of the whole fight, he goes into the back line and everyone from Fnatic is turning around trying to kill him. This means the rest of Millennium can join in the fight fairly safe. Notice how we started here again. We have the home guard Aaron here going in, rest of Fnatic turns to him. We have four people killing him this time around. Also, Peggy is using his ultimate to knock him back into them once again. This means, oh he actually hits Kerb as well, very nice ultimate. Kerb is almost gonna die from this one, but due to Sonya's and due to his tricks afterwards, he's able to survive. This means now Kevin, he joins the fight once again. Nobody's here to burst him down, he's so tanky. And meanwhile, we're watching this replay, the Baron just being picked up by Millennium. And notice right here, notice Jerry, this is a mad life hook. He's landing straight on to Reckless. Boom, there you go, and Kreslan can come back in and they can manage to pick up three kills. Three man play on that hook as well. Absolutely amazing stuff there. So, Millennium with the Baron buff. What do we make of this? What will it happen here? Will Fnatic? go for a five game losing streak. God help them if they do, because Millennium, well, they've been anchored at the bottom of the league and they've looked dreadful in some of their games, but this game right now, they are taking it to Fnatic. They are really taking it to Fnatic, and actually, we talked about the Lee Sin picking up all the kills early. This has actually meant he's been very, very tanky, and we see how much, uh, how much Fnatic has to invest in killing him every time he goes into the fight, which means once he's actually dead, the rest of Millennium can come in from behind, and the Fnatic without the ultimate can't really do anything to Kevin, and once again, they can't do much to Kerb if he actually decides to get in. RNA getting locked up down the bottom there, but they haven't really got the focus and the damage to go through. RNA, by the way, I got a, I got a target. You know, the fact that he's been the one that's been throwing himself into the team 
and he's been doing work. You know, it's over aggressive sometimes. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But today, it seems to be working. It works if you're this tangy and Fnatic has to use so much on killing you. It doesn't even matter if he dies in his team fights because the rest of the team can just, you know, finish everything up. Well, we have the ward cheering army in the house today. They're happy every ward goes down. Remember, this is a barren up Millennium. He's trying to get on towards Reckless. He does find him. Gets the kick on towards him. The rest of his team can't come in there. Uses that Radiant Omen. Well, the rest of Millennium and he just safeguards away. Takes the lantern. Safe and clear. They took the tower. Millennium hit and run. I've never seen a guy throw himself into the back line this many times and he doesn't even care if he dies. This time he managed to survive and Millennium just picked up a tower for it. Every single time he does this, Millennium gets something. See, now they need to rotate down. They're going to go down towards that bottom lane. Kirby's is ready and waiting as well. Didn't fancy taking on three members. Dragon up in five seconds time. Millennium again with the timer on this one, taking all the objectives. And they will get this one for free because there's no reason for Fnatic to try and fight for it versus the Baron of Millennium. It is a lot of gold at this point. We're 35 minutes in. It's going to give you know, quite a boost from him, but this time around, Fnatic is pushing up and Kirk, he's in the bot lane. Yeah, he went down towards that bottom lane, realized the minions should be able to take it down. He's going to have to teleport back because Fnatic were trying to take some positional advantage. Yeah, the moment they get shepherded away by the rest of Millennium, he decides to cancel that teleport. Oh, oh need to be Ed, careful. you are deep in dangerous trouble here. Quickly safeguards the rest of his team. He saw Yellowstar really wanted to start the fight there. It's a very nice move though, they moved down towards Kerb, so if something should have happened, he would have been able to come up and join the fight. Meanwhile though, he's just pushing this top uh, bot lane all the time. Still 60 seconds on this Baron buff, it's Kerb going to be doing work, the rest of Millennium come around, Pillar of Ice being used to just block up Fnatic, and now they can try and turn this fight. They have taken down three turrets and a dragon with his Baron buff already. The culling coming out, Kraton going very aggressive, he gets caught in the cocoon, they're going to follow it through with the solar flare, flashes out of that one, Saez is going to get locked up, Saez, the tankiest member, just gets annihilated! by Kerb there. Kerb now on towards Peke. Zonya's hourglass is going to be used. Kerb will be able to go down. He gets the play for Trickster. Oh, oh, he's going to escape as well. I do not believe it. Kerb Peke gets locked in there. Sinai tries to come in. Kerb just urging straight, gonna straight win it. towards it. Wow! Millennium acing Fnatic on their own tower with the barrel buff just about to time out. Millennium just wrecking Fnatic. And MVP Mikhail Sponkeri straight onto Kreaton when he got locked down by Leona. So he managed to, you know, be able to dash out. And then again, the rest of Millennium that come in, they're so tank at this point and Kerb has so much damage that there's nothing Fnatic can do to kill the front line. Millennium take down Fnatic in week five. What a turnabout result this is. And Fnatic, my god, they're on a five game losing streak now. This is not good times. Millennium overjoyed with that victory. Aranea, you know, you love him or hate him, he was flinging himself into those fights. And again, due to the early kills he got, he got the early randuance, he was so tanky, Fnatic couldn't kill him fast enough, so he could just keep doing this over and over. And it's actually the story of the game. Millennium, they got so tanky with their front line, and at the same time, you had the, the Fizz just doing so much burst damage, and also you had Kreaton in the background just hammering away constantly. And also, the one hook from Jiri, it was my big play for sure. Absolutely, I was about to say, you talk about the big plays, there was quite a few in there. The Jerry hook followed by the play. Look at Aaron Air flying himself into the team's creating situation. Fantastic play from Millennium and finally may have found.